and welcome to Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McRoy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. Welcome, sisters. I mean, we've been here, but thanks. What's new? Nothing. Uh, I've been with you all day. I don't know. Yeah. What's new with you? Boy, did you catch those Oscars last night? Woof. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh. Oops. Talking they, point denied. They, they accidentally gave the Oscar to the wrong people, and then they had <gasps> to say it. Like, oh, no, sorry, not you. The other ones. Didn't they was, do that in Miss Universe as well? Yeah. Like last oh, year? really? Yeah. I didn't watch. I'd already gone to bed because I'm old, but I, yeah, I saw the, the Twitter explosion about yeah. it this morning when I was sc- scrolling through my feed. Uh, and um, I'm very glad I didn't see that because, woof, I cannot handle I that kind been of thing. I would have so uncomfortable. I would have crawled it. under the couch. Um, apparently, they were given the wrong envelope. And I, did Emma Stone win Best Actress for La La yeah. Land? Okay. And it said Emma Stone for Best Actress from La La Land and the envelope for Best Picture. And they thought it just meant La La Land. And they said La La Land won Best Picture, but it did not. Moonlight did. So... Now, oh, let me wow. just say this. The only the only movies that I saw that were nominated <laughs> were Moana and the Trolls movie. And <laughs> what I'm going to say is that Moana was robbed. I agree. Hmm. Did Moana now, not win, I guess? Actually, to be fair, I, 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 did see, I did see Zootopia as well. But, and Zootopia is a great movie. Moana's better. And the Moana song was definitely better because yeah. they played them on the Oscars. So I, I can have an opinion on this. Yeah. I do think the music from La La Land was very nice. I did enjoy it very much. Yeah, it's very nice, but it's no Moana. That's true. Our buddy Lynn was robbed. He was robbed of his EGOT. Mm. But you know what? He's going to do it anyway. <laughs> I have faith in him. He's going to get gonna that steal Oscar the someday. Oscar. No, I don't mean he's going to. I don't mean he's going <laughs> to stage a great heist and <laughs> steal somebody's Oscar. I mean. Don't, you're giving away the plans, Sydney, on a on <laughs> worldwide broadcast. <laughs> I mean. Guy's gonna get an Oscar. Yeah, he's like super talented. Yeah, the Oscar's coming, and uh, in in Charlie's little heart, Moana won. Although Trolls would have given it. I was gonna <laughs> say the Trolls movie <laughs> would give it stiff competition. Tell her, would you rather never hear "Can't Stop This Feeling" again, or never hear "I'll How Far I'll Go Again"? And mm. she just sits there and goes. Uh, she Why? can never decide. Why do you have to take one away? I love them both so much. <laughs> she could never be able to decide. It depends on which costume she's wearing is really the, the answer. Um, but do you know how I found out about that Oscar situation? How'd you find out, Riley? I saw it in the news. Hey, listen to that. You've, you've inherited my transitioning ability. And you just gave it away. You said it was a transition. <laughs> that, we're going to talk about news. Jeez. You know, what's interesting is I also said, you say you heard it in the news and I would say the same thing, except for I heard about it on Twitter from like people tweeting about it. A hashtag envelope gate. That's the uh, hashtag that we're using. Is it really? Is it? Mm -hmm. Well, everybody was blaming Warren Beatty because he read it, but he was, he was handed the wrong envelope. So that was on him. I mean, I don't know, man. I like it's an award show. It uh, is crappy for all involved. Like that's very... That would be very difficult to be the people who didn't get the award or the people yeah. who were like kind of like, oh, it's really us. But then you want to be nice, too, and mm. humble. And I mean, but still, it's just an award show. Yeah. That's not know. that big of a deal. But this is all very interesting <laughs> because back in the day, I would have found out about this. Well, if I'd watched it when I was younger, I probably would have stayed up for the whole thing. But if I did go to bed because like dad would tell me about it the next day after he read about it in the paper or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, that's my er earliest memory of like getting news regularly was just dad at the breakfast table, like reading the newspaper out loud to us. But the stuff that he would choose to read us was usually like (laughs) really messed up stuff in the police blotter and the funnies <laughs> because we're i needed- thought you were gonna say everyone who died <laughs> and yeah, obituaries yeah, yeah all the just all the best content but i think i think the the need to read dilbert aloud um <laughs> this may be the taylor best. no joke <laughs> we were all having dinner together yesterday this was yesterday, yesterday. and he says you know <laughs> it was the funniest thing in high and lowest this week <laughs> no joke <laughs> And he proceeded to just tell us a high and lowest comic. I like, mean, here, here was the high. It was so funny. Here's what high and lowest said. 
Hey, you know? I'm not making fun of you, Dad. I love you. <laughs> I, I I love you too. And I I you know also went to school for four years to study the fine art of making comics. And I can fully agree that they're just that much more better when read aloud and completely <laughs> ignoring the visuals. With no art. No, we love you, Dad. We appreciate all the bummer stories you've told us from the newspaper <laughs> through the years. You know, it, it, it led very, very skewed amount of news coming into my life, being that being the filter. But I think it makes a lot of sense for me, like horrible stories and funny comics. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it really is funny because that's when I... This sounds like an old person thing. Like back in my day, we got our news from the newspaper. But really, that was my idea of when I was growing up. If something was true, I thought, well, it it would be in the newspaper. Like that's where you could source it from. Like, well, was it in a newspaper? Then that's reliable. Like the newspapers are where the real news is. My perception next was TV news, which for my money could get a little dicey. I thought... You know, like our local like evening news was probably pretty just here's stuff that happened. But when it, you know, the major news networks were around by the time I was a teenager, um, then the 24 hour news cycle had kind of begun. And I always was aware that eh, some of those people, though, are a little biased. So TV news was a little less. And then the idea of going to the Internet for news when I was a teenager, that was the Wild West, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You didn't know what you were going to get. And I, I would, did not know how to filter that information. So I would not go for news on the internet. I would go read the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, when I say I got my news now, 95% of the time I'd say it's the internet and social media. Like see something on Twitter. Like you're talking about the Oscars mm-hmm. thing or on Facebook or on um an online news website, something like Teen Vogue or something. Um, but other than that, I'll watch the evening news with mom and dad and I'll come in in the mornings when I'm like getting ready to leave and I'll watch about 10 minutes of the Today Show. That's it. <laughs> like that's all of my news. And I seem to always be pretty, I don't want to say caught up on everything that's going on, but mm-hmm. like if there's something huge happening, I would not be oblivious to that fact like i would know it was happening which it's one of the things um certainly when a lot of our news came from newspapers and for me when i say newspapers i mean like our local newspaper Uh uh i read the herald dispatch which was like our huntington area newspaper um as i got older and i was feeling fancy i would read the our capital city charleston the charleston gazette Mm -hmm. uh that or when I thought I needed news from outside this area, I read a USA Today. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's where I, where I would get my news. And it was interesting because, one, a lot of the news I was getting was hyper-local. Mm-hmm. So I was focused a lot more on what was happening in the world immediately around me. And two, um, you can't be as up-to-date if you're getting your news from a physical newspaper. Obviously, a lot of news newspapers have online have websites now Mm -hmm. and so you know clearly that's much more up to date but if you're just getting it from a physical newspaper it's it can only be so up to date so i was always a little bit behind and only local stuff for the most part Mm -hmm. i had a very like myopic view of what was happening in the world yeah um i will say dad mostly because mom is a lot more in touch with internet and social media and stuff than dad is but dad will sometimes read me things in the newspaper or see something on the news and i'll be like well yeah i already saw that like that happened Mm -hmm. yesterday that happened last night and you're just now finding out about it and it's crazy (laughs) to me that like the oscars thing happened last night i was already asleep but as soon as i woke up this morning it was one of the first things i saw when i checked my phone and mom also knew about it from checking her phone but dad didn't know about it until either one of us told him or he saw it on the morning news because yeah. it wouldn't have been in the local newspaper if it had happened at, you know, one o'clock last night. Well, and, and I think that's one of the things about the internet is it can even best TV in that way. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, even with 24 hour news cycles and these channels, you know, you can tune into CNN at any time and find out what's happening. Right. Well, you know what I can do faster? Open my Twitter feed. Yeah. And instantly, you know, as I'm looking at it, things are pouring in that are, you know, showing me what's happening, whether they be true or biased or not, at least information is coming in. Right. But 
it's interesting with something like Twitter because I do I I know that I get my news in some of the like <laughs> worst ways possible because I'll look at like the tw- trending hashtags on Twitter or like the sidebar of the Facebook feed. But that news is interesting to me because it's obviously not ranked on what really matters in my life. It's just what most people want to know about, which Mm -hmm. in my mind, it's like, well, this is this is what everyone's talking about. That's the stuff I kind of want to check in with. It's usually garbage. It's usually like, you know, like Kelly Clarkson fell down some stairs or something like it's. No, what? No, she didn't. That was just that was just an example. Oh, (laughs) don't say things like that. Sorry. Kelly <laughs> down one stage. Uh, Kelly just, Clarkson plays the soundtrack to my heart. Uh, I'm sorry that that was an Does alternative. She? I love Kelly Clarkson. That that was that what was Kelly Clarkson songs. Do you love? I have I on my phone. I have their songs. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is my heartbeat song, and I'm gonna play it. Keep going. Um, keep don't, don't worry, Sydney. That was an alternative fact. Um, it oh, didn't actually you. happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> But point being that the stuff that probably I should be concerned about is not necessarily the stuff that I'm going to see as a trending hashtag. <laughs> yeah, no, that's very true. I, I wonder with one issue. So the idea that now our news is a lot more. I mean, Riley, do you say would you say you pay attention to the stuff that's happening in our immediate like city, tri-state area kind of um, news as much? I'd say important i don't want to say important things but things that are bigger like Mm -hmm. not individual incidences but more like overall issues that are going on or if something insane happens i'm up to date on that kind of stuff and again it's like the evening news we'll literally sit there and watch an hour and a half of evening news an hour which is just local and then 30 minutes it's worldwide news okay so you watch you watch the i watch the local news but i don't watch it as intently as i watch the worldwide news just because it's it's more interesting to me the stuff that's going on globally and it's it's interesting that you say that because I, I feel similarly now um i at you know what's it, what has made me more in tune with our community is honestly having a child mm-hmm. it makes me think a lot more locally because then i start to think about sending that child out into this world right here mm-hmm. this very you know this community in this world and so then i start refocusing my you know what is happening here um but when you have all that news coming in from all over the world and you have access to it 24 seven, the question is how helpful can that be all the time? Because with some of that information, you might be able to do something. You might be able to make a decision, make a choice, act in some way. Um, it might change the way you think or feel about certain things, make you a more open person or a kinder person or a more thoughtful person. But then there's other times where news comes in and it just alarms you or scares you and there's nothing and it can make you feel very helpless. And it's a tough balance, I think, because Mm -hmm. the more news that's flowing in from all over time and space and you can't do anything about it, the more you can feel helpless. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Um, For me, at least I like being able to take part in like political, not political only, but knowledge based conversations, I guess would be the way to describe them about things that are going on locally with teachers or other students. And I like to be able to voice my opinion while also being able to sound educated. Like I know what I'm talking about. And I think it's just important, you know, wanting to apply for scholarships soon within this year that I'm going to have to know about current events and talking about in class, I didn't do articles on current events and every week having to find something that's going on and writing about it. I think things like that are important to me to know even when bad things are happening and even when they're kind of overwhelming and kind of make you in a bad mood or a bad headspace, Mm -hmm. it's still important to know what's going on for me, at least just so I can be aware of the state of the nation I'm living in. Mm -hmm. It it is a funny thing to think about though, because I mean, there is obviously something of the old adage, ignorance is bliss. It's like, we can have access to all this information that largely does not affect your day-to-day life. Like you could mm-hmm. ignore what's going on in the world as a whole. And maybe, especially right now in this climate, be a happier person. But it, it seems like it's a, it's a responsibility as a human to at least know, even if there's nothing you can do about it, to be informed and be aware of what's happening mm-hmm. on the, on the world as a whole. And it's hard because you want to strike that balance between, um, 
like I said, knowing what's going on immediately around you too. You don't want to just see the, the big stories. You know, I think, um, you know, a good, a good analogy to that would be, uh, with elections. So often people will spend tons of time talking about an election, who you're going to vote for, for president and maybe Senator, but past that, you don't spend nearly as much time thinking about who you're going to vote for, for your city government or county positions or your state government. You just don't see like on, on a day-to-day level, people having those conversations mm-hmm. and probably those people are going to have more direct impact on your day-to-day than the federal government. Now, obviously the federal government is going to have impact too, more right. and more so now mm. um, with a lot of the changes. But if if we spent more time thinking and, and learning and questioning those local positions, I don't know, maybe that would be actually more impactful to our day-to-day life, but we tend to ignore that for the bigger, for the bigger picture. Right. And, and I think news, sometimes we are in danger of doing that too, where we're not looking at anything that's happening immediately around us because we're looking at the whole big, the big story. Mm-hmm. And the problem is we can't do anything maybe about that big story, but there are lots of little stories happening that aren't as exciting or dramatic that we might be missing. Right. And I will say that's that's something I've probably um, done myself is ignoring local issues and only focusing on things that are happening nationally and globally because that's what social media focuses on. I mean, right. you're on Twitter or you're on Facebook or anything else, really, online magazines even, and you're reading these articles, they're not going to be, unless they're from a news source based in your area, they're not going to be about anything in your area. They're going to be about national and global things Mm -hmm. so you're not it's easier for me to sit down and read online articles or see something on twitter and then look it up online and see like is this true and read an article on like cnn or the new york times or something um than it is to wait until i get home and then at six o'clock watch the evening news Mm -hmm. and know what's happening in that day and i think it's just hard to find as easily what's going on in your local area and not as interesting in a society that's mostly based on technology and social media and having it right there with you right at that moment when it's harder to find local issues right at that moment. Sure. You'd always go on topics. What's that? The topics website, Huntington topics. I don't know what that is. It's like a message, a local message board where people talk about, isn't you know, that just like gossip? It is. It's all just gossip in Huntington. It's, it's really, <laughs> It's, it's mom got upset about topics one time because it's just like women talking about each other. It's a journey, man. That sounds I've never been on super it. fascinating. Actually, it's a whole it's a whole thing. You could probably do a whole podcast, which is just you like reading excerpts from Huntington topics. Oh, I would no. actually love to do that. I don't know that it's news necessarily. Um, well, I mean, there's <laughs> highly local, but there's a. A high school kind of equivalent of that, actually, that I also wouldn't say is news, but it's, I mean, technology spreading information about things that are going on. It, I think it's called after school. And it's an anonymous thing that goes through your high school and you put in what high school you go to. It only shows you other people that are in your high school and you can post whatever you want about anything or anyone in your high school. And it will just be on this message board of everyone else in your high school, but no one will know who's at it. That seems dangerous. Yeah, it was uh, like taken off the app store or banned or something because of things that were set on there. I was only on there for about a week after or before it was taken down. Yeah, but that, that seems pretty dangerous. Yeah, I did not dig that. No, uh uh-uh. no. Um, um, that was you, really news. Do you guys still have news in? Well, I know you do actually. You have? Do you still have like the news that you show in school? Um, we that have the students do. We have like a morning show that is put out once a week i think but maybe only one it's supposed to be once a week but it's maybe only once every like two or three weeks and you're supposed to watch it in your homeroom every friday but what does it cover it covers like well you know sports teams winning games and sports (laughs) games and like sports games sports games and like the local like the school play and auditions and so it's all school it's all school stuff Hmm. is there any is there any way that they try to yeah, no, I don't want to say enforce news, you know, intake, but like, is there any mandated like way that they try to get you as students? I, the reason I'm asking is we used to have Channel One News. I remember when we were younger, uh-huh. which was a thing they would show in our classrooms, I think once a week. 
And it would just be like this quick little news program by like hip young <laughs> journalists. I mean, right. they were, right? Like they were very cool looking younger journalists and they would report on just a couple of very select, but like very general news topics mm-hmm. about things that were happening to all of us mm-hmm. in the country, you know, things like recycling or something, you know, right. like th- something like that. But like we, we used to watch that like once a week. Um, I think the only way they have, I don't want to say enforced, but made us read into news, I guess, is my AP English class. We just started a project where every week for the next five weeks, we have to follow one specific journalist or columnist. Is mm-hmm. that how you say the columnist? Um, and, uh, that's take each article they write for five weeks if they write one every week or five articles they have written within the past six weeks so very recent things and then comment on the current events they're writing on and your stance on them and whether or not you agree with them but just following one journalist basically and keeping up with five current events for five mm. consecutive weeks that's really interesting and she told us we had to like spread out our topics we couldn't just focus on one topic for five weeks in a row so it, mm-hmm. she's kind of encouraging us to learn about current events but also finding someone we're interested in, someone whose style of writing we like, and picking our own topics we're interested in, as opposed to giving us a list of five we have to do or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, just a random interesting fact. I wanted to confirm it by checking inter- internet news to uh, to not spread more alternative facts. But uh, uh, Channel One News is where Lisa Ling started off. Now, like a major, yeah, yeah it's like I, she started at eighteen. I didn't realize that. That's super cool. I remember that. Or actually, yeah. now that you say that, I remember her being on that. She's one of the I young journalists. Young and cool. Yeah. Yeah. Young and hip. They were. They were young and hip, and they yeah. told you cool news, and you liked them. I And th- that was one of the things I remember. It's and I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this now. When, when TV news... Yeah, because, you know, Riley, the news wasn't always on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a time where news was like a specific part of the day. Uh-huh. And then ended. And then you did other things and not watch news. But now that we have 24-hour news channels where any time of the day you have multiple channels you could turn to, Mm -hmm. that would be giving you some version of the news. Mm -hmm. How much of it is true could be questionable. But they're they're telling you something they're calling news. When that first became a thing and there were a lot of different ones you could check out, I remember like that this was my first introduction to the idea that news could be entertainment. Fox News... To pretty early on was the one that seemed to me when I was younger and I would look through the news channels would be more entertaining. It like there was more like editorializing, more like joking about different things, um, commenting, not just giving the news, but like, and here's our like quippy take on it or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and like making fun of people and all this stuff that wasn't news, but if you weren't paying attention to the facts might draw you in and make you more likely to watch it because it made the program itself more entertaining. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember seeing that when I was younger and thinking like, Oh, well this is news. That's like, but they're trying to make you, they're trying to make you watch it. Right. And now as I got older, I realized like, Oh, well they're just trying to make you watch it. Like that's, that doesn't necessarily, that's not the best way to convey a fact. Mm -hmm. Um, but I remember seeing that and thinking like, oh, it's news, but it's in- entertaining. I mean, it's 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 joked about it. This is like the plot of Anchorman too, so, so to speak. But the uh, invention of infotainment is something that our generation has seen. Right. Like it's not it's not really about the content. I think that that's you know that's kind of the old school thought on the news is that it's just the facts. Like I am presenting the facts in an unbiased way, unless it is an editorial piece. But uh, I think that now it's like it's, everything has an editorial edge to it because that makes it more interesting, even if it makes it less factual, which is scary. <laughs> it, it is very scary. And I think part of that was, you know, that you get the competition between all these news networks. They're all trying to tell the same stories, but they're all trying to get them, you know, you to watch them instead of somebody else. And so they're going to cater to you in one way by entertaining you. The other way that 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 works, that they cater to you is by telling you what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. So mm. they and that's where you get like this political division between different news networks is if you know your viewers, if you know the base of the people who are going to watch your program like to see things that confirm their already held beliefs, 
you're going to be more likely to either show stories that support that or spin stories to make them sound more in favor of your beliefs because then you're going to th- you're going to feel affirmed. You're going to watch it and go, "See, I knew I was right cuz look, they just reported that story that confirmed what I already believed." And then you're going to keep watching that program even mm-hmm. if the view they just gave you wasn't complete or maybe wasn't completely honest. Mhm. Um, I think the one form of, I don't know if you want to say it's news or accurate information, but it's become more popular with my generation is um, satirical news sources, kind of like The Onion or (laughs) Saturday Night Live even. Right. Which um, I read, but know their satire. So it's easy for me to like laugh at them and know what the actual story is because I've also been reading um, what's actually happening. But I... That's kind of also dangerous because I have seen plenty of people on the internet quote articles from The Onion or post links to articles from The Onion and say, can you believe this? Mm-hmm. And like take them as fact. Yeah. And I, I, that's the one thing that I think the internet is dangerous about. Not even necessarily TV news, but just the internet. Having sources like that online, if with everything being so fast, you don't want to have to research and make sure something is actually true or whether something is supposed to be a joke or not. You just want to read it and then be outraged about it and right. tell all of your Facebook friends about it. So you see something like we had to read an article in English class that was from The Onion and she told us this is a satire piece, but it had to do with what we were talking about in class. And it was about um, the treatment of animals when they are in the in food industry Mm -hmm. but instead of animals they replaced it with soybeans and it was ridiculous reading this article about the harsh treatment of soybeans and (laughs) these cramped and windowless conditions and the way they are treated but there were students in my class who did not realize it was supposed to be satire and reading this and thinking this is ridiculous this is outrageous how can this happen and if you're a person seeing that on the internet you put that out there and then make all of your friends mad about it. And it's all so fast. Everyone takes it as fact without taking time to research whether something, something is true. I think you're right. I mean, it really, the satire is an interesting point to bring up. Cause if you go back to like, like old satire, if we talk about like a modest proposal and Jonathan Swift, which was oh, yeah, exactly. a satirical piece about how we should start eating babies. <laughs> Obviously he didn't really right. start <laughs> babies, but, um, uh, there were people at the time who read that and, of course, were outraged, like, what do you mean? I'm not going to eat a baby. This is terrible. But the problem is that was, like, published in, like, a pamphlet mm-hmm. <laughs> that you, like, got and read from, like, your buddy who had a printing press or whatever. Right. I don't know. You know, now you have that on the Internet. You Google whatever you're interested in learning about. I don't know. You Google Trump and Russia. And then you start re- just reading random articles. If you don't know how to assess a source and you, then you don't know, like it looks like the same as the other websites. Right. And I don't know this is a satirical website. And right now, so much new, so much of the news that is happening sounds so outrageous anyway. Mm-hmm. The truth and fiction are getting closer together Yeah, in terms of how outrageous what we're hearing. I mean... There was an article, I think it was on BuzzFeed. It was like a quiz slash article, like, can you tell whether or not these headlines from this past week are real or fake? And they were all real, and they were all outrageous. Like, the woman in Korea who killed Kim Jong-un's half-brother or stepbrother or half-brother? Half-brother? Half-brother. Yeah. yeah I don't want to misinform. I'm almost positive it was half brother yeah but showed a picture of her wearing a shirt that said lol and it said she thought she was on a game show i was like there's no way this is real it was real like that's actually what happened she was told she was on a game show where she was spraying water in men's faces and she thought this was part of the game show so that was real and i thought there is no way this is real but it was And, and see that makes it hard then because then when you read other similarly i you know shocking headlines you kind of think, well, that probably that could probably be true, is real too. too. That and doesn't seem as outrageous as that other real thing. Right. Especially if it happened in Florida. I'm like, that definitely probably happened in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Like, I like that there's, I don't know what, there are a couple of websites. It's like, you, Florida is just like a search term. Like, if you're looking through news articles, like, it's just, and then the, this stuff. No offense to anyone actually in Florida. I think that the news has embraced a really bad narrative for you guys and it's really it's really it's crappy. very unfair you have a beautiful state 
yeah. I've been to your beaches and enjoyed them many yes. times, as well as your Disney World. As well as your but, Disney. <laughs> but that's really the, 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 the Universal Studios <laughs> and Harry Potter Land. <laughs> that's the really the the kind of scary thing that we're doing is like I think everybody has a narrative they believe about the world around them, and then we look to the news to confirm or or you know like change that narrative. But when the news starts feeding into these narratives, be it you know, these people are evil and they want to take your money or, you know, like we have all these reasons to be afraid Um, or Florida is an insane place where only craziness happens. Like we have these narratives that have been embraced by certain aspects of the media that are incredibly far away from the truth and more about just keeping the story going, making sure that the the facts align with the narrative uh, instead of the reverse. You're exactly right. And then and then that's where you get stories like one that I saw circulating on Facebook that uh, a lot of people I know were completely outraged about, um, which was completely based on like people criticizing Melania Trump in tweets. And the whole news story was about as if like the entire, I don't know, left wing, all liberals, everybody who was a Democrat, everybody who didn't vote for Donald Trump was all in one voice criticizing Melania Trump in some horrible way, like some big platform that we stood on a tower and all said terrible things about her all at once, when really what they were referencing were some mean tweets. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but anybody who's been on Twitter knows that you can find mean tweets about literally anything. I mean, there's a whole segment on on Jimmy Kimmel, (laughs) just people reading mean tweets about themselves. That's absolutely right. And I mean, they did that last night on the Oscars. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing. And if there's somebody out there who's tweeting a mean thing about Lin-Manuel Miranda, there's somebody out there tweeting mean things about everybody Mm -hmm. and everything. I mean, that's, (laughs) I mean, seriously, right? Like, right. That's so that's not a news story. There's the, the, the idea that people are mean on Twitter. That's not news. For anybody who's on Twitter, right. but what's dangerous is let's say you're not somebody who's ever been on Twitter and you don't, you don't know how that information is filtered. And so you mm-hmm. read a news story that makes it sound like the majority of people in the Democratic Party are saying these horrible things about the president's wife and aren't these people terrible? Mm-hmm. And you'd go, well, those are terrible things to say. Well, those people are terrible. Mm-hmm. And really it was just two Twitter trolls or something, you right. know? Right. But that's the thing. It's that you, you... Even if it's it's a fact that these, you know, handful of people were saying mean things, if you treat it like it's news and you treat it like it's a, you know, when you rise it up to the platform of, of national news, it's like it must it must be an actual problem. It must be real because I'm seeing it in this platform that is only meant for real things. And that's that's dangerous because that's, you know, anything given that treatment will will come with the air of authenticity. Exactly. Yeah, and that that does make it really dangerous. And it also, you know, we've talked about like the aims, whereas the aim of news, I think, should be and probably was and then is still for some outlets. I'm not I don't want to paint all journalists with the same brush at all. I I think that I think this is a problem in a lot of news media, but not all by any stretch, uh, is that the aims are not just to inform, but to entertain, to uh, retain you as a viewer by confirming your already deeply held beliefs, whether they be right or wrong but also to outrage and incite sometimes. Mm -hmm. There are times where I see stories and I think all you're trying to do is make someone angry. Uh, And I don't, that that to me, how is that? I mean, it's productive if what you're trying to do is say, look at this horrible injustice that's happening. We need to work harder to correct it. But I don't think that that's the aim if the story focuses on, look at, for instance, these scary people who are out to hurt you and are going to do bad things to you and your family. And we need to do everything we can to keep these scary people away from us. And here's a new story about how these people are bad and evil and you need to be afraid, which is, I mean, a lot of news Mm -hmm. anymore. And all that does is make people angry and scared and angry, scared people rarely make good decisions. Right. Right. I feel like didn't, didn't Marilyn Manson talk about this? (laughs) <laughs> I feel like Marilyn Manson had like great points about like the the news media's job or the, not the news media and not all of it, but like a lot of the media is trying to make you scared. And the more scared you are, the more stuff you buy <laughs> and you go buy stuff to make you feel safer and to make you feel better about yourself. And then that they scare you right. more. So you go buy other things to make you feel safer and prettier and better and smarter. And I don't know. If, I think I'm, I think I'm quoting Marilyn I, Manson. I can now. believe that. Uh, well, that's, you know, and to, to cite a recent example, um, 
the uh, the women's march. It was funny how it was covered by various news outlets. Like, you know, some people focused on the fact that like, hey, h- however many people, you know, around the world marched and there was, you know, like it was a nonviolent march, like, you know, the positivity of it. And then there were the news medias that t- took the same picture of a broken window at like a Starbucks. And that was the headline was like a window got broken at a Starbucks during this. These people are crazy and they're rioting. And it's like, I, you know, did a window get broken? Yes. Did all these women and, and, and did all these people march peacefully? Yes. These are both true things, but you can choose how to, how to frame that. And that frame is the, is the really scary thing. <laughs> That's exactly right. Cause I had, I had people, I remember ask me after the women's March, um, did you participate in the abortion march? Yeah, and people were calling it that. The reason that they asked that is because it was reported in various outlets as an abortion march. It was labeled that. It was that, that it was that the only t- that, that that was the only issue anybody was concerned about. Mm-hmm. That that wasn't just one of so many things right, right. that people were marching for, but that and and the reason that I had people I know personally asking me that question is because they went to their trusted news sources that they read and, you know, look for for information. And that's what they heard. That's what mm-hmm. they read. Um, well, I think the most important um, skill to have in media that's so frequent and so up to date and so fast is being able to decide for yourself what is truth, not what is your truth, but what is the truth. And when something you're reading is biased or when something you're reading is uh you need to cite a second source maybe to tell whether or not it's true. And my history teacher told me that there's no such thing as an unbiased news article. And I think that's true to an extent, whereas it's hard, nearly impossible not to have a bias on some topic or another. And when you're reading it, whether or not you agree with the bias or you disagree with the bias, I think the most important thing is to be able to discern for yourself, this person is more biased in favor of this topic or against this topic so don't read into everything they say against this as this is an awful thing or everything they say for this that this is an amazing thing and everyone needs to be doing this Mm -hmm. i think having just critical thinking still skills is probably the most important thing when it comes to reading news and being able to decide for yourself whether or not something should be taken as fact yeah yeah i I think it's also important when you say that riley that you're keeping in mind because you're right that the truth is knowable. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds like a really obvious statement, but one of the things that people who are trying to manipulate the facts, who are trying to make you believe alternative facts, who are trying to, you know, convince you of something that is wrong, one of the things that they will do is try to make you believe that the truth is not something that we can know. And once that uncertainty is there, once you have, once that little, you know, grain of sand (laughs) is in there, it, it will just continue to wear away at everything you read and hear and see. And you'll begin to doubt the reality of your own senses at that point mm-hmm. because you have been convinced that, well, I know that what I know that all these people told you this was the truth. But what I am telling you is that that's not everything and it's not that clear. And maybe we can't really know the truth. And maybe this is just <laughs> too difficult. And th- once you kind of pr- create this breeding ground for unknowability like that there is no truth everything can be the truth and people can convince you of anything so it's really important to know the truth is out there <laughs> i can't believe i just said that wow 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 the truth there is a truth i mean that things happen or they don't happen there are ways to test if something is real or or fake and you can find out the truth if you look and if you read and if you think and if you ask questions And if somebody is telling you, well, I know that our eyes and our, I know we saw this and it happened and this is real, but I'm going to try to convince you that maybe it wasn't that simple and we can't know that. Don't listen to them. Mm -hmm. They're manipulating you. And this is a very, I mean, it's not a new thing, but it's, it's crazy how, how prevalent it has become in recent times. I mean, terms like alternative facts and post-truth, which is something I've seen. We live in a post-truth society. It's like, what does that what? mean? That's Orwellian as heck. Like, yes. But, you know, but you're right. Like, it's, 
it, it, it used to be the battle of like, well, I think this is what happened. Well, I think this is what happened. And now it's like the, this dangerous new weapon, which is who can really know? Who knows? Just believe whatever you want to believe. It's like, no, no, no. Absolutely. Like if, it, if you care enough to know about it, care enough to, to know the facts. Like, Right. Because that argument, who can really know? We just can't. That unravels history. It unravels science. It unravels everything. If you really believe that nothing is knowable, mm-hmm. that's well, very that, dangerous. That's true. And yeah. Um, it has it has me coming kind of back to, um, I actually recently resubscribed to the newspaper, <laughs> to, to the local newspaper, as well as to the New York Times, actually, mm-hmm. uh, because I... I almost, I almost feel like I need something that is more concrete. I need something that I feel is more solid of a news source, something that I trust that I can turn to routinely. Um, and me wanting to know more about local issues and be more involved with my, my own community as well as the, you know, our, our nation as a whole. Uh, because even though I feel like I'm a lot better, especially through the last, I don't know, six months or so, I'm getting better and better. <laughs> at evaluating internet sources for how trustworthy and how real they are. Um, I'm longing for, um, more contact with journalists, you know, right. I'm longing to, to see people who, who, you know, write real stories, who do the research and the investigation and write the stories and do the news reports. I, I want more contact with those people. And I know, I mean, I know I'm, they're there, they write for papers, they're on TV, they're, they're real journalists on the internet. I see them, I read them, I find them, but I'm looking for more and more that I can trust, that I can turn to for steady sources of actual information. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm looking for more concreteness because I feel like the internet is so, it's such a nebulous place right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I can't believe that there aren't journalists with integrity that, you know, they're, their passion is truth and that is what they seek to put into the world. I, I think that that's, that's not, that's not a thing that we can be convinced has gone away. You just have to find the people you can trust. Exactly. Yeah. That, I know. And that's really scary too. When people are telling you that all news media is full of liars and people who are trying to trick you or deceive you, that's, that's another way of trying to tell you that the truth is unknowable. No, of course they're not. They're excellent journalists who not just who do a lot of hard work to tell us the truth, but who put their lives on the line, who Absolutely. die yeah. to bring us the truth. So, it, you know, when we're talking about actual journalists who know what they're doing and who are reporting real facts, not just for clicks, not just for, you know, ratings, but who are doing it because it is their profession, it's their career, it's their passion. These people should be applauded. And, and you know, they are right now, they're what stands between us and I don't know when you talk about an Orwellian <laughs> misunderstanding of words and facts, that's, you know, the journal journalists are our frontline defense. It's true. I think the most, I don't want to say dangerous, but kind of scary thing about all of this is my generation is growing up in this. And instead of being able to, so many people say our generation is being a, more accepting generation and open-minded and we're becoming more of a world full of people who are uh, more, I don't want to, I don't know how to say this without sounding political about it, but just a more accepting generation of people because of the world we're growing up in. But it's also hard because when this is the news we're getting, this is how we learn to take news and this is how we learn news should be. So if you are growing up and you don't have the skills to be able to decipher when something is biased and you're just taking everything as fact, then when you grow up and my generation are the adults, then it's all of a sudden a whole generation of adults who have not recently discovered all of these internet news sources, who have been growing up with all of these internet news sources and who are unable to decipher anything as truth or false or biased or unbiased because this is how we've been raised. So it's impossible for us to see anything different. And then it's just, continuing this line of people who the internet is our only source of information not the generation of people who are the adults now who had newspapers and evening news and still rely on that so they can have real news it's people who are only reliant on the internet and that's kind of scary because the internet is 
a place that's full of truth and full of real news and full of real journalists, but is also full of the polar opposite of that. Do you do you think most of your friends get their news from social media? Yes. Mm. I I don't want this to sound bad to my friends, but I would say I am the most active of my friends when it comes to trying to be involved in news and current events and finding what's really happening as opposed to just scrolling through Twitter and seeing what the most common things are people are tweeting. What about Facebook? I, that, I mean, is that your generation? I mean, because you, you guys don't use face, face, Facebook as much, right? I think my generation was the first generation of kids to be on Facebook. Yeah. But now it is just adults. Like, I, I don't get on it anymore other than to like be on the still buffering Facebook group. <laughs> Facebook is chock full of fake news. Yes. But yeah. I, I think that that might be influencing people who are Taylor and I's age and up. Right. As opposed to your generation. Right. Yeah. And I think the the better thing about your all's generation almost and our parents' generation and our grandparents' generation is mm-hmm. you were raised on newspaper and TV news, but TV news not even as much as newspaper and magazines. So you still know that's more of a concrete truth. So you can still rely on that. And our generation has never been exposed to that. Mm-hmm. So future generations will just rely on the internet as truth. Mm. Well, which isn't great. But I think, you know, I, I, I think it even because uh, lies can be printed as well as they can be typed. I mean, it's they could be anywhere. I right. think sure. it calls That's a good point. Yeah. It calls upon all of us to honestly to know when you're being played. Like yeah. you recognize the narratives that you want to exist in the world. Recognize the narratives that you think are out there to make other people believe in a way that is conducive to certain political beliefs or what have you and you have to recognize when something that you're reading or intaking is is it telling you facts or is it or is it playing you and that's that requires just a higher level of consideration with everything you're consuming but you know that's it's always like living in a society where you know everything's that you're like where there's an abundance of food you know and you kind of have to pick and choose versus mm-hmm. consuming everything it's this we have an abundance of information it's no longer the one source and that's what you have it's that you have way too much so you have to be right. a much more critical thinker with what you consume and, and you're exactly right i think you make a good point tay i i you can print lies and certainly just because something's in a newspaper doesn't make it true right and just because something's on the internet doesn't make it false i mean let me be clear my husband is an internet journalist <laughs> <laughs> i have the utmost respect for people who practice internet journalism and when I say those words, I mean them exactly what they say, right. what I'm saying. Right. That is different from what we're talking about, which right. is fake news and, you know, misleading and biased news that is only meant to anger, incite, misinform, yeah. mislead, that kind of thing. Um, but I, I think that uh, the Internet could provide you with more points of view and m- more ways of looking at the world and different not spins on stories, but different perspectives, which is more and more important. We've been hearing the same voices for a very long time, telling the narrative of the world. Only recently are we starting to allow other voices that aren't heard enough tell their story of the world. So the internet allows for that. Right. So it could be a beautiful thing. It's just, it's also a dangerous place. Yeah. So make sure your news is real. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And I would say there are a lot of great resources on how to, just my last thing, on how to find out if something is real. Um, First of all, if something sounds outrageous, I would look for a second source. Mm -hmm. Um, Secondly, if the, if there's an, an, like a really outrageous graphic with it, a picture that looks like really, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened in the world. You should source the picture. You can just do a reverse Google image search and find out if that's really from that event or if they just stole art from something else that happens on fake news sites. Yeah. If all the stories are just published by the news site, if there aren't names of journalists, that's not, Oh wait, but that's less likely mm-hmm. to be, um, look at the URL. If it's got weird extra letters and it's not just a dot com or <laughs> org or something. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, so if CNN sense. is spelled out phonet- phonetically, it's probably fake. C N N. Um, but it, I always do that. I do that when I'm researching and I do that when I'm looking at news. If something sounds outrageous, it might be untrue. Go check it. It might be real, especially now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I think our news has become six sad world from Daria. And it's <laughs> sad. <laughs> yeah. Sad. 
It Sad. might be real, but double check it. Um, Sad. Yeah, because it's on you. And the truth is knowable. You can find it. The truth is out there. The truth is go. out there. Scully and Mulder were right. Well, thank you, sisters. This has been enlightening. You're welcome. Mm. Um, good luck, everybody out there in the wild <laughs> world of today, of 2017. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You seek out some truth. Yes. Be, continue your quest for truth. Um, and also, continue your quest for excellent podcasts at MaximumFun.org. Oh, <laughs> whoa. There you go. Uh, you can join our Facebook group at Still Buffering. You can tweet at us at Still Buff. You can send us emails at uh, still buffering at maximumfun.org. Uh, you can also go to maximumfun.org forward slash jumbotron if you'd like us to send a message to somebody on our show. Uh, and thank you to the novellas for our theme song, Baby Change Mine. This has been Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. I am a teenager. And I, I was, was too. too. The Dead Pilot Society podcast brings you hilarious comedy pilots that were never made, featuring actors like Aubrey Plaza, Andy Richter, Paul F. Tompkins, John Hodgman, Adam Scott, Molly Shannon, Busy Phillips, Tom Lennon, Anna Camp, Laurie Metcalf, Felicia Day, Michael Ian Black, Adam Savage, Paul Shear, Ben Schwartz, Skylar Aston, Mae Whitman, Josh Molina, Ben Feldman, Nicole Byer, Jason Ritter, Sarah Chalk, Steve Agee, Jane Levy, Allison Tolman, Danielle Nicolette, Casey Wilson, Anna Ortiz, Lorraine Newman, June Diane Raphael, Kieran Chipka, Ed Week, Zach Knight, and Carrie Kenny Silver, John Ross Bowie, Jamie Denbo, Janet Varney, Alexander Torsani, Richard Summer, Matt and many more. Listen at Mac. MaximumFun.org, iTunes, or wherever you download podcasts. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.